With Garam joining La Seraphime on promotional activities and Chu planning on leaving Blockberry Creative, this week has been wild to say the least. Let me tell you all about what's been happening. Three new members are joining TO1 and Wake One Entertainment has finally introduced them to the fans. Ahead of their comeback in July, Wake One Entertainment announced that there would be new members joining the lineup. The first member is Daigo, who's a vocalist and dancer who's born on January 21st of 2002. He may seem familiar to Produce 101 Japan fans, because he appeared on the second season of the show. Another Produce 101 Japan contestant who's been announced as a member is Renta, who's a rapper and dancer born on February 16th, 2003. The third member to join is Korean member Yeo-jong, who's hitting the stage for the first time. He was born on January 29th of 2005 and will be a vocalist. Best of luck to the new members. Here we are again with another media controversy surrounding Hive. On June 14th, BTS posted their BTS Festa video on the group's official YouTube channel. While it has always been been known that the Festa videos are pre-recorded and then posted for the group's anniversary, some people thought that the video was streamed live. There's even a part in the video where Yoongi clearly states, by the time this comes out, we would have been to the White House. Based on the Instagram photos, the video must have been filmed around the 20th or 21st of last month. So where is the issue? Well, on the same day the video was released, Hype stock price saw a dramatic fall of 24.87% and nearly 2 trillion won of market capitalization was just gone making the investors refer to the Festa as a 2 trillion won dinner. Though the news came as a shock to fans, the investors were equally shocked by the announcement and started complaining about how they released such critical game-changing information of a listed company through a pre-filmed YouTube video. The stock prices were expected to rise since BTS was dropping a new album and were even celebrating their ninth year anniversary. But even though the album topped domestic and foreign music charts, Hype's stock prices still plummeted. Now people are pointing fingers and either blame Hype or they blame BTS. Since there was too much of a delay between the making of the decision and the announcement, the risk of internal information being leaked just increases. Coincidentally, Hype stock prices fell a staggering 11% on June 13th, a day before the Festa video was released, and fell more than 3% on the 14th when the video came out, which was a new low for two consecutive days. An official from Securities Industry pointed out, For a group that's responsible for most of the company's revenue to make such a decision and reveal it through YouTube with such a huge lag from pre-filming, of of course it would be a problem in the capital market. Another official said, Even if it's not directly listed as a disclosure item, they should have disclosed it because they have a duty to protect their investors. This basically means that Hybe knew that their sales would be affected by the video and didn't tell the investors so they could sell their stocks beforehand. Which is really, really shady on their part, and the media are currently looking into how legal it is. Netizens were also shocked at the revelation that Hybe tried to hide such a thing from the investors. A comment said, BTS is their absolute main source of revenue, and accounts for 70% of Hybe's sales. They knew if BTS halted activities, the company's stock price would plummet and shareholders' doubts would grow. The Financial Supervisory Service needs to launch investigations into Hybe's stock trading history of its employees, including those that were involved in producing that video. As you can see, not only the media, but the investors who withdrew their money are really angry at how Hybe dealt with the whole situation. SM is finally being called out for their mistreatment of Utah, and all I can say is, it's about time. Even though NCT has hasn't had a comeback, Utah is still booked and busy. He's had a full year of solo activities like magazine shoots, multiple interviews, brand collaborations, and more. He's also been casted in a major Japanese franchise, High and Low, and will make his debut as an actor. Of course, NCTZens are equally excited and proud of Utah's ability to balance his activities as an idol and his solo schedule. But even with all of these achievements, SM still has failed to promote him properly, barely sharing anything regarding his activities. Fans feel like SM has promoted every NCT member solo activities except for Yuta. Not to mention, some of his solo activities have been really high profile as he had collaborated with GQ, L Japan, Craft Boss, and even Louis Vuitton. He also had numerous TV appearances, a documentary on Zero ET, and an interview on Nikkei Asia. According to different reports, Yuta has been instrumental to SM Entertainment's financial recovery in Japan after the pandemic hit. It was reported, SM subsidiary company in Japan that is responsible for their music releases literally put Yuta on their financial report at two-thirds of the reasons for how they are recovering from operation debt during the pandemic. With what Utah contributed, SM wrote that they are expecting to recover from the loss of business. Along with never being promoted on SM's official accounts, Utah has also never had his fan cams and face cams posted. A fan complained, The discrimination is so ridiculous. Like, only Utah's thumbnail was chosen in a way that his face can't be seen in NCT 127 sticker teasers. Everyone else got face cams. Utah's the only one that got a normal vertical face 
fan cam. Another fan wrote, So it's only Utah whom NCT accounts hate for real. We got Johnny and Met Gala, Daehyun and Parada, but we can't get a high and low post? Is this a joke to you? This isn't the first time that SM has been called out for mistreating a member, as there have been issues with Tem being ignored by the label. Let's hope that SM fixes this soon. After Gadam's mistreatment scandal, she was put on an indefinite hiatus, with others thinking that she wouldn't be coming back at all. With the way Hive had been dealing with the scandal by protecting her and insisting that she's innocent, they thought that the company was trying to kick her out of the group by putting her on hiatus for a long time. But it seems like that's not happening after all. On June 21st, Source Music made an announcement to let everyone know that Gadam would be joining group activities in Japan and will be appearing in a music program as part of promotions. Netizens were bothered that she appeared in a Japanese magazine pictorial as they criticized Source Music for the decision to not edit her out of the picture. Now that the news of Gadam coming back has finally hit the public, netizens have gotten even angrier. They said that since Source Music is bringing her back for Japanese promotions, she'll most likely make a comeback in Korea as well. A netizen commented, Hype really made a bad decision. Did they really think Korean netizens would forget about this and support the group? What they're doing only works if there's no evidence, but there are too many pieces of evidence against her. Another said, I get that they couldn't help but to include Gim Garam in the magazine pictorial, but then they still released her solo interview video and are still shielding her. Knowing the backlash they'd be going through, people really can't understand the logistics behind Hybe's decision. Let's see how this thing unfolds. There's an update on the problems between Blockberry Creative and Luna's Chu, and it's spicy. According to an exclusive report that was published on June 22nd, Chu is thinking of leaving Blockberry Creative and signing with BY4M Studio. There were reports earlier this year saying that Chu filed for legal termination of her contract with Blockberry Creative due to scheduling conflicts. The issue had more to do with Chu just wanting to choose her own schedules instead of being overworked. It was also said that the court partially approved Chu's request. When the media tried to contact Blockberry Creative about the issue, they refused to make a comment. The issue seems to be much bigger than that, though. A longtime fan site master of Chu declared that she wasn't given standard care by the company. They stated, I haven't said anything until now, but Blockberry, they haven't even given Chu a manager for her solo schedule since May. That's why she's been taking taxis for her schedules and she's been carrying her own luggage, too. Their manager isn't even busy. When Chu had to call a taxi through Kakao Taxi to get to her schedule, the manager was driving Chetty to a birthday cafe event. They went on to say that the company didn't even bother driving her from one schedule to another. They said, What's even worse is the day Luna filmed Weekly Idol, everyone left in a van while Chu came out first and left in a cacao taxi. If she had only taken taxis for personal and undisclosed schedules, I would shut up. But for yesterday's schedule, they took applications for fans to come watch. Yet they didn't give her a manager and she had to carry her own luggage after getting off work by herself. They even claimed that they have photo evidence of Blackberry Creative tried to deny the claims. But this mistreatment is apparently going to stop soon. Based on recent reports, Chu is working her way to making an exclusive contract with a company called BY4M Studio, who was strongly focused on SNS and digital marketing. But there isn't anything confirmed yet, and Blackberry have yet to comment on the matter as of June 23rd. To end the video on a good note, Chu is collaborating with Icon's BI on a track. They're releasing a single titled Lullaby as a part of Dingo's special project, which is set to be his demo song. The song is set to release on June 27th, so make sure to stay tuned and support it when it comes out. Share your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye!